everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, as well as the simultaneous broadcast on Electrician Live, the podcast and videocast series set to launch in January of 2020. Today we're going to do a quick lesson on branch circuit conductor sizing for a single phase motor. Now I have done an extensive video on motor sizing, whether it's a short circuit ground fault protection or the overload protection or feeders, branch circuits, um, tap conductors, all of those things have been covered in a more extensive, longer video, but we're starting to do a lot of shorter videos on certain specific topics. And today we're going to talk about the branch circuit conductor sizing to a single phase motor. Okay. So let's look at our example. So here you see the branch circuit this is a short circuit ground fault protection that goes out to the branch circuit that's coming down to the overload and then con continuing on down to the single phase five horsepower 230 volt motor. Now the couple things that we're doing here is we need to understand that you're going to have a nameplate on this motor and that nameplate is going to give us a lot of information. We're going to need it to size the overloads uh, in 430.32. We're going to need it to size uh, what if we have a motor that is, for example, used for elevators and we're going to need to know what that nameplate FLA is for that application. So those are rare cases where we use the nameplate FLA or amps. But in most cases, when we're sizing branch circuit conductors, feeder conductors, uh, all of that, we're going to use the FLC, full load current, that's in the back of article 430. And for single phase, it's 430.248. And for three phase, it's 430.250. So in our case today, we're just dealing with a simple three-phase motor, but these same concepts and principles can be utilized as well when you're doing three-phase. And again, we have a video on that. If you want to go watch it, it's on our YouTube channel. Just go to our YouTube channel and search for motors or go up to the right where you can filter and you can see all of our videos and you should be able to find that motor video. Okay, so let's talk about the steps that are involved in sizing these brand circuits right here. Okay. So first things first, we need to locate the FLC. That's the full load current. Remember, we're not going to use the nameplate. We're going to use the full load current from the table. Why? Because it stays consistent. A five horsepower motor at 230 volts, you utilize 28 amps. Now, whether or not the motor's FLA moves around or they replace a motor later on, for this circuit, if we size it to the values that are in this table, then consistently, every time we make a change, we utilize this table, then we keep everything very consistent when it comes to sizing, okay, especially the conductors. So we're going to utilize the table. In this case, as you can see, this is a five horsepower motor and you go down to your table uh, and you go over to the right, find the voltage that you're dealing with, in this case, 230 volts and come down and it's 28 amps. Another interesting thing is you probably know as well as I, this is a 240 volt nominal branch circuit. However, motors deal a little different, so you need to take the voltage rating off of the actual motor. In this case, it'll correspond to what's in the table. In this case, it's a 230 volt, although we know, like it says right here in the last line, it's really a 240 volt nominal branch circuit, which can, voltages can fluctuate. But as far as the motor's concerned, it'll say what voltage to use on the motor. So here it's 230 volts, so we're gonna use this column. So a five horsepower motor, as you see in your, in your code book, is 28 amps. Now, let's start working it out. Again, we're sizing these branch circuit conductors. Now, the first thing we located was the FLC. We did that. Remember, we're not using the FLA or whatever the value is on the nameplate. That's for the overload, okay? Now, so it's five horsepower, 230 volt at 28 amps. That's the FLC, full load current. Now, 430.22A tells us for this continuous duty motor, and we will always assume continuous duty unless it states something else, that we're going to take that at 125% for sizing these branch circuit conductors. So that's what 430.22A tells us. So we take that 28 amps times 1.25, and that equals 35 amperes. Now here's something interesting. We're all been trained that there's this thing called small conductor rules. For example, you are dealing with residential or light commercial, and you're not familiar with motors or HVA systems you probably think that the only application for a 14 gauge is to terminate on a 15 amp overcurrent device or 12 gauge onto a 20 or a 30 onto a 10 gauge, okay? 
Well, for general applications, that's correct. And under 240.4, you have an A through G application. And what we're running into is a G application. And that is where it says, you know what, for some applications, you can ignore the general rule for small conductor rules under 240.4D. We're going to use G. Now, that's unique because that could result in a conductor that has an overcurrent device, or in our case, a short circuit ground fault protection that is larger than what you would normally have to protect the conductor. And I think you'll see that here in a minute. All right, so let's look here. So as you go through, you're gonna see 28 amperes times 1.25, that is 35 amperes. And remember the small conductor rules that we talked about, that is that 14 gauge for 15 amp, 12 gauge for 20 amp, and 10 gauge for 30 amp, don't apply here. Now it might work out in our example, but doesn't apply. So the next thing that I have to do is remember that motors under 110.14c, motors are default at 75 degrees C terminal ratings, okay? Now, in our case here, we're not talking about the conductor type, so we'll assume it's THHN, THWN-2, which is, since we're not talking any adjustment and corrections, it's still good for 90 degrees for adjustment and correction, but ultimately, we're bound by this 75 degree column because it is a motor, and it makes a specific statement for motors. All right, so in this case, 75 degrees C terminal, we need to have a conductor that is good for that value, 35 amperes. And so in our case, we have a value, the 10 gauge, 10 AWG. And if you have your code book handy, you can go to it. I'll do it too. I could have pulled it up on the screen, but we'll just go to the code. And let me pull up my code book and we'll look at it right here. You see, I got my code book. And if I look at a 10 gauge, it is actually good for 35 amps at 75 degrees C. All right, now it has a little asterisk there to the left that's to remind you about the small conductor rules in 240.4D, but remember, G is going to say that, okay, for motors, don't worry about that. Why? Because you have a certain amount of startup inrush, and then it comes down to running speed or the running current, and so it's okay, and the rules are gonna allow for this. So I don't want it to confuse people. Typically, you would at a normal brand circuit, you're gonna limit it. Okay, very much limited to a 12 gauge is going to be 20 amps, 14 gauge is 15 amps, and 10 gauge is 30 amps. We're talking motors, so things change a little bit. So you got your code book, and you determined you need it. So for 35 amps, like I said, 75 degrees C, 10 gauge conductor. All right, now that's where people would say, whoa, 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 whoa. 10 gauge, small conductor rules, it's only good for 30. You're putting in a 35. That's what your the calculations for 35. Absolutely. Why? Because under the 75 degree column of 31015B16, the ampacity tables, if you're in the 2017 National Electrical Code, or 310.16, if you're in the 2020 National Electrical Code, that's going to tell me that I can put 35 amps safely on a 10 AWG copper conductor, and I'm going to be okay. Okay, so that's kind of the, the way it works, and that's an, a, a great example of how to size a conductor for the motor for that small branch circuit application. So hopefully you got something out of that. Uh, again, it's just that simple. Don't overthink it. Uh, remember that the rules in 240.4D for small conductor rules don't apply to motors, and there's actually others that it doesn't apply to as well that's listed in 240.4G, so that's your homework. Go to 240.4 and go look at G, you'll have a table. And the table lists all of them, like HVAC applications is one of another good examples where this comes into play. So hopefully you got something out of that, folks. Till next time, stay safe and God bless.